children at home back in Columbia, but lives in Miami. Two years younger than Hatton, two inches taller than Hatton, a one and a half inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fifth. They both weighed in one pound over the limit, and they both have rehydrated unofficially 10 pounds overnight to get the 149. Rules of the bout with a. Let's go now. Let's go. Okay, gentlemen, caballeros, you already received your instructions. Ustedes received your instructions. Okay, right here is good. Either that's going to be low. Yeah, aquí está bien, aquí no. Right here is good. Either that's going to be low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. I want a good, clean fight. Yo quiero una pelea limpia. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Escúchame, cuídate. Listo? Ready? Let's go. Vamos. Fighting an aggressive fighter like Urango. Hatton says he will not always fight fire with fire in this fight. There is a rumor that he may have some boxing skills. Hatton starts fast as always. Yeah, but he does have some boxing skills. I Hands think he, he shows that. It shows that in a couple Hands of fights. And that's the one reason that I like him a lot better than a lot of anxiety type young fighters. He still boxes very well. As they broke apart from the opening clinch, Irango ripped oh, Hatton's oh, 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 cheek oh, 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 with a right hook. But Ricky Hatton can take a shot. That's one of the things that makes him so special. One of the greatest coincidences in the sport, Larry Merchant. If Hatton wins tonight, he gets his record to 42 and 0. Great Britain's other tremendously dominant champion, Joe Calzaki of Wales, at 168 pounds, is 42 and 0. You know, I know this is very, I'm looking at the size of the gloves, and it's really obvious right away the gloves that Ricky Hatton had on look so big. This is a, and I was aware of the fact that he's wearing 10 ounce gloves for the very first time not, yes and normally these are the gloves that fights are like fighters like Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis have normally fought in but now Nevada has a rule I think for anyone over 135 pounds has to wear the same gloves that they, which guys like Lennox Lewis which is about 100 pounds bigger and here than, you see than, Hatton, than Hatton. Hatton standing the boxing. outside doing not fighting fire with fire So, Larry, the point is made already. If Hatton wants to, he can go into a stance and begin to use his jab and box, and already he's showing that he intends to do it tonight. That's not Rango, even though he's physically looking like a very strong muscle guy, he's, he's really not that busy. He's waiting to counter punch. And, you know, if Hatton throws so many punches, it's going to be very difficult for him to just counter punch. Had yes, punches because they come in volumes. Honestly, in right. addition to his footwork, well, Ricky's moving in and out, a lot more body movement as well as foot movement. And now to solidify the other story you introduced, Emmanuel, Nevada, the only place which has instituted the safety measure requiring all fighters down to 135 to wear 10 ounce gloves, do you think it truly makes fighters safer? I, I can't say, but I mean, we have to start somewhere. You know, they had so many deaths, particularly in Nevada in the last year, more than probably any other major state, but they have so many fights here that they're just trying to find something that they can use as a gauge to see if it works out for safety. Personally, myself, I would say no. I would say with eight ounce gloves for smaller guys. I think it makes for a better fight. It is a violent sport. Maybe sometimes a better fight is a more dangerous fight, but people who install power lines or clean windows on the top of tall buildings or working coal mines know that they're exposing themselves to danger as well. Pro football players have very difficult after lives. Boxing isn't alone. Hatton consistently beat Urango to the punch in that round. Get him some good shoe shots. Get straight stuff. To finish on some straight stuff. I mean, getting involved really too quick. Step to the side a little bit, you're meeting him head on. You know what I mean? You, you, where you're good is the angles. You've got the angles, you've got the balance. Don't meet this fucking head on, you know what I mean? I'm finishing on some straight stuff. Let's have a bit more of a look at him, yeah? Come on, let's go, let's lift up the pace. Move up the pace. Keep up the speed. You gotta finish up top, you gotta finish up top strong. 
He's scared of you. He's scared of you. All you have to do is pressure him. Pressure him. Throw your hands. Throw punches. Don't step backwards. Don't step back. Block your hands up and counter attack. Counter attack with three. Finishing off with the hug. How do you feel it? Good, good. Box numbers underline Larry's point that Hatton consistently beat Urongo to the punch. 21 out of 85 for Hatton, 10 out of 49 for Urongo. Urongo came out and fought at a pace as though he's fighting against a normal guy. Oh, oh, Hatton oh, oh. is no normal guy. Yeah, and I think the, the fact that Ricky is going to make him fight at a faster pace than he normally likes to fight at is going to be a big factor going down the stretch. In particular, Ricky's having good success with his right hand through the center well, as Hansford, well Hansford. as his left uppercut between the gloves. Because on record, if Durango thinks that Hatton's going to run out of gas because of the fast pace, he's probably got another thing coming. Yeah, and that's just the one thing. A lot of guys that fight, intense fighters like Ricky, they're only good for four or five rounds. Ricky Hatton is one of the few fighters that can fight the whole 12 rounds with intensity. Well, we're used to see him imposing his strength by consistent pressure on his opponents. He has opted at this point in the fight not to do that. Yeah, he's faster on his feet than Arango, which is very really interesting. Stop, stop. Arango's much, much slower. Incidentally, in the last fight, I introduced the concept of headbutts, and though we came close, it never really happened. But here you've got a southpaw come forward fighter against a conventional come forward fighter, and if ever there was a formula for headbutts, this is it. And Hatton, incidentally, cuts like Arturo Gatti. He cuts, but he's fighting a very smart fighter. In addition to moving with his feet, his upper body movement is very good. When he finishes his punches, he angles his body a lot where he doesn't get hit afterwards. Hatton punching from various angles. Still faster than Urango midway through the second round. Urango hoping perhaps that he can impose bigger power and make himself a factor later in the fight. Durango's got a terrific looking body. He's built like a junior middleweight oh, at 140 pounds. <laughs> Claims he doesn't lift weights at all, but the, the width of that back and yeah, the depth of his pectoral sure makes him look that way. But the, the fact all of those muscles is what to me is seemingly slowing him down. Stop, stop. Ricky is naturally strong, loose, flexible, and it's much more fluid with his punches and his movement. Come on, is going to have to step up the pace a little bit, unless he considers himself a devastating one-punch knockout guy, because he's falling further behind on points. And the foot movement that Hatton is showing here, far superior to what seemed to be the case against Luis Galazzo in Boston last year, when he was fighting seven pounds north at 147. The layman says, how can it make that much difference, Emmanuel? It makes a big difference. I and mean, everybody's body is cut off at a certain point where you can you can lose weight at a certain point, and if you go beyond that, you're not effective in the same way. When you're fighting those middleweights, is really what those guys at 147 are. They're coming for 160 normally. But by it's a large, normal 160. Yeah. By and large, through the first two rounds, Hatton landing two to every one that Urango lands. You've got to be okay, first, no man. Be first. Tire. Don't wait for him to throw. Be first. Okay. Jab, jab, and throw your hands. You've got to pressure him more. Throw more punches. You understand? We're losing. We're losing. We're down. Come on, we're down. you got to be strong from the first round. Throw hard punches. Hard punches. You understand? You feeling good? All right. He's hitting you and he's hugging you. He's hitting you and he's grabbing. But come on, lively, lively. Give me one. I'm sticking with a screw shot. That we did in the last week. The work for this kid. He's strong now. and get weaker as the fight goes on. But not if you're using too much energy. It's looking on with fucking stealing the rest, you know what I'm saying? Copy box numbers continue to make the point we're talking about. In that round, Urango 11 of 49. Hatton 26 out of 62. It's not very hard for a judge to score a round like that. Hard right hand coming up and under by Ricky Hatton. And remember, Hatton may expose himself to some damage by fighting the way he does, but he's proven he can take a shot. Stood in for 11 oh, rounds against the extremely hard punching Costa Zou and made Zou quit on his stool. And he fought at a very good tempo for the entire fight, but this fight here, he, he's given one of the best exhibitions I've saw in the boxing. I know he did it with Ben Tacky, but he's 
fighting a very beautiful fight tonight in terms of technical fighting. Well, I love the phrase he used in his conversation with Larry Merchant yesterday. You don't always fight fire with fire. See, that's the difference between he and Diego Corrales. Diego feels regardless of who he's fighting, he's got to show that he's more macho than they are. Even if he's six foot tall and he's fighting a guy five feet six. Pass three miles, leave us. Hatton mixing body punches in with consistent flow upstairs. Urango seeming to look to land one big shot and simply getting swamped in the punch out with department for right now. Now there's a nice little right hook inside by Juan Urango. Hasn't really managed to land his left so stop, far. Stop. Well, even when he throws his left, he doesn't seem to have the power that his right hand has, even though he fights, but that probably is because of the fact he said he's really not a southpaw. Again, look at his left hand, he doesn't really punch with it with that much authority. Like marvelous Marvin Hagler, like Michael Moore, who lost his heavyweight championship to George Foreman, a right-handed guy who fights in a southpaw stance. Yeah, and Marvin hurt a lot of people with his right hand. There's yeah. a right hook that backs Hatton up a little bit, or Ricky was on actually already backing up when he got caught with the punch. Urango seems to understand now that he needs to step up the pace if he's going to stay in the fight. This cornerman gave him some great instructions. He's not going to win the fight, fight at the pace that he's fighting at. He's got to step up and have a lot more intensity. Look at Hatton ducking and slipping after landing to the body. This is high quality stuff Ricky Hatton has shown you in the first three rounds. Yeah, after he lands punches, he angles himself and twists off where he doesn't go straight back and he gets away from getting hit with tail end punches. Stop. Throughout the last two weeks, he has expressed huge emotion about fighting in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah, free, saying, my hero Roberto Duran used to fight here. No, 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 no. no is this a... And of course, he can feel the support of the crowd here, just as in Manchester, where the house would be packed with 22,000 all screaming. But I him. tell you what, Durango is stop, making stop, stop, stop. him really fight it. Durango is, even though he's not punching that much, Durango is putting a lot of pressure on Ricky and making Ricky expand a lot of energy. Well, not for nothing as Durango won the title and is an unbeaten fighter. 13 KOs and 18 fights. He tasted your power. He tasted your power already. You got it? Press him. Press him. He doesn't like it. He knows you've got a hard hand. Come on, go in with three punches, a combination. You gotta throw more, throw more, in and out, in and out, throw. Yeah, you see Rango coming back with a... Okay. You gotta drain this kid, you gotta drain him. You understand? You really need to feel okay. Right here you see Ricky Haddon throw a right hand, perfectly timed, right between those gap of the gloves, and he caught Arango. And in fact, he's been very effective punching between the gloves tonight on the, all night long on Arango. And right here, you see Arango come right back with a beautiful right punch. And that is the type of a punch that Ricky has to watch out for. The tail end punches that he gets hit with sometimes. It might help happen tonight that the last outing was also against the southpaw, Luis Calazo. And Calazo tattooed him a lot with good right hooks. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored through three? Look at Jim. Three to nothing. Mouse 30 to 27. Separate. Ricky Hatton. He's outworking him, Jim. He's landing him more shots, and he's winning the fight, even though I think he's going the wrong direction, going to his right all night. But, you know, Jim, I got to comment on something you said in the first round. Hastry, Those boxing Mouse gloves, that glove is almost up to Ricky Hatton's elbow. I've never seen a glove that high on a fighter since Roy Jones boxed John Ruiz and how to use those 10 ounce grants, which were the same thing. But anyway, three to nothing, 30 to 27. Hatton. Hatton's trainer, Billy Graham, told Harold Letterman that the size of the glove makes it harder for Ricky to get his punches into the spaces where normally he would be able to fit an eight ounce glove in. Fascinating. You don't think it could make that big a difference, but Graham said he just can't land the same kinds of shots because sometimes he can't find the gap as well. With the clean shots he's landing, how much more damage would he have done with eight ounce gloves? Pass me, all oh, has me, has me, Paulus Lemons. This, this Emmanuel, fight, what do you think? This fight well, might have been over already. What do you think, Rick Emmanuel? Is not a, right Rick, about that? Rick is not a devastating one punch puncher anyway. He's a balanced out fighter. But I think that it would have been a more exciting fight. I do think he would have landed much more cleaner and, and, and punches and had a lot more effect. 
right now the gloves I think are being uh, handicapped to him as far as I can see. Of course what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Urango, Urango isn't accustomed to fighting with 10 ounce gloves either. It, it's true of both fighters here tonight. But Urango's a kind of a slower methodical type fight anyway where Ricky is a more fast explosive type speed puncher and I think it affects him a lot more so than a guy like Miranda which is more of a physical type guy. A plotter so to say. When we have seen Hatton in recent years in his fights it's though he's been all substance and no style here tonight he's showing us some style and it's along with the substance yeah but no, 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 no. Rango is putting him, making him still punch a lot more whereas Rango is moving forward pressuring him whereas Casa Zou was example was just opposite he backed back to Ricky set the tempo so even though he's winning it it's still it's a little pressure that's being put on him to make him punch a lot more than he likes to. Hatton did a nice job of blocking Urango's body shot with his left elbow. He's thought of mostly as an offensive fighter, but he's not without defensive skill. Very few silent moments in the fight. When Ricky Hatton is fighting, you can hear the almost constant roar that's put up by British fans here, but that round ends relatively silently, and Irango holds up his fists as if to say, now I'm beginning to take over, and instantly the crowd boos him. You're not, you're not making the effort to do it. Get yeah. round him where he can't do anything. You've just got to nullify his work. He's just going to just, all he's going to just want to keep walking and walking and walking it down. He's going to take a bit of shifting. So, do when he comes, top him a couple of times, then come around there. Try and get there. And if he can't get him, at least he can't do anything to you. Come on, man. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, we're down. We're going to win. We're going to win, Dad. Come on. Come on. When Urango lifted his arms at the end of that round, the, the Brits started chanting, Uria, Uria, Uria. Manchester East for who are you? Who are you? Maybe because of the pace and the way he fights, a Hatton fight seems to go by fast. We're already in the fifth round, and it feels like the fight started about five or six yeah. minutes ago. But it, 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 it is, it, you know, your Ranga doesn't throw a lot of punches, because if he did, it would be a much more exciting fight. But Ricky's having to make an adjustment and be prepared, I think, for himself to go for a good 12-round decision fight. And, uh, and, and Urango is trying to counter punch. Oh, there's a hard body shot by Urango, which Tony Weeks deems to be below the guard. And Hatton steps away momentarily, but doesn't bother to take any more time than that. Hatton stepping forward and throwing right hand leads. Classic tactic against the southpaw. He hasn't done it all that much, but that's an adjustment you might see more and more frequently through the rest of the fight. Good right hook to the body by Urango. Hansfree, Hansfree, Mansfree, Mansfree. Go on, Hansfree, Mansfree. Stop, stop. Tony Weeks speaks Spanish and quite frequently will use it to try to get Urango to hear his instructions in there. Good body shot again by Urango. It seems as though Juan Urango has made a decision here to drop his attack and go to the rib cage. It's an adjustment that Hatton hasn't yet adjusted to. Yeah, I think he's following the orders from his corner from the last round. They told him he's going to have to pick it up. He's losing the fight. He's going to have to step to him a little bit more, and he's doing just that. Now Hatton fires a body shot to the rib cage of Urango, lands that right up the middle again, but once again Urango pops him to the body and hurts him. Urango's landing very good body punches this round. Rick is not boxing and moving as well as he was before. He's leaning in a lot more on those punches and getting caught with body punches. Smart tactic by Urango to switch to the body punches. Hatton was beating him to the punch upstairs consistently. Now Ricky has slowed down, and Urango's pace is rising. It seems like those body punches have hurt Ricky, and, he, and he's still hurt bad right now. Well, give Urango credit. He's made an adjustment in this fight. Normally, he comes forward 
looking to counter his opponent. Now he's been willing to take the lead. A lot of fighters find it extremely difficult to land left hooks against the southpaw, but it hadn't so quick. He's been able to get in his left hook upstairs against Durango. Still, more and more often going to the straight right hand lead. Rangel's most damaging punches seem to be his right hand, particularly the right hand to the body. Now, during this round, we've been watching Jose Luis Castillo, who got a narrow escape, split decision in the first fight against Herman in Gujo and has a possible date with Hatton later this year. We already told you what a big fan of the sport Castillo is, but there's a lot more to this than being a fan. He's got money on the table. He is rooting for the guy in the light blue, trunk, blue trunks, and he is watching intently. Round coming up, guys. Thank you. Manager you Fernando the Beltran standing right behind, counting the money. The he's, not, he's not one around. Do you understand? You know, Cage, I don't I think he's going to take a lot of shifting. Mm -hmm. Get right and stick him with straight shots. Get to the side, stick him with straight shots, and stick him with straight shots. Hey, I got hurt the ball. Hold him, hold on. Push him off, push him off. Push him off. This fight is ours. Push him out with your body. Come on, work him, buddy. Work his body, work his body. There was a sea change in CompuBox numbers in the fifth round. Suddenly, Urango landing 23 out of 52 power shots, and Hatton only 13 out of 41. The simple adjustment of dropping his attack from upstairs to the body paid huge dividends for Juan Urango. And hey. Castillo, watching in his dressing room, may be saying, hey, the body is where it's at, baby. That's where you're supposed to fight. And I see a little concern in Ricky Hatton's corner a little bit. I think for the first time, after feeling his strength and power, of Urango, he has a little bit more respect for Urango. And now this time, it's Urango who gets a chance to rest after what Tony Weeks deemed to be a low shot from Hatton. Tony Weeks telling Urango, you've got five minutes if you want him, and Urango looks as though he's going to take a good long time to come back from this one. Now he's ready. A fighter doesn't want to take so long to recover from the low blow that he gets cold, but on the other hand, he doesn't want to go back into the ring compromised. Yeah, but very seldom will you see a fighter take the four or five minutes. I think a lot of them because of the pride and the fact that they really just want to get back to the fight after that. Because when you have a protection cup on, usually it's very seldom to get really that seriously hurt. That's why they have the rule that you can't run a fight by a, a low blow, so to say, unless you just had a series of them and they just stopped the fight from over. Not one single low blow. Now, after what happened in the last round, it appears that Hatton is coming back in this round to say, OK, you want to go to the body? I'll show you go into the body. I can match you body shot for body shot. Hatton upstairs with the right hand. Pace of the fight change. Another body shot from Hatton right in the middle of Urango's belly. And Urango kind of nodding as if to say, all right, we're fighting now. Yeah, Lorenzo's a very physically strong fighter. The more I'm watching him, the more I'm respecting his physical strength and nothing else. Hatton again with that thudding left hook upstairs. Rango lands his right hook. Again, they trade body shots in close. Weeks has got a lot of work in, in front of him tonight. Two guys who do go forward and throw a lot of punches from different angles. Lynch. Body shot, stop, stop. low blow, clinch, body shot, low blow. Tony Weeks is sweating in there. This is the, the mauling style that we've seen Hatton in often. Uh, throwing one or two punches and falling stop, stop. in. Well, he's succeeded in slowing the run go down with the body attack in the first two minutes of this okay, round, okay, Emmanuel. Okay. So far, the fight has turned back in his favor again. He's fighting pretty much at the tempo he wants to fight at, and he's landing, he's out boxing and now punching Urango at this point. Urango again tries to hammer Hatton to the body with the right hand. Now Urango says, all right, let's go upstairs again. Hatton lands a left hook. Stop, stop. Very few fighters have fans backing with this kind of passion that you feel in this room. About 6,500, 7,000 people, well over a million dollar gate. Hatton used to fighting before crowds three times as big in Manchester. Well, there's no question 
that the 22,000 Mancunians, as they called him, were a huge factor for Hatton in his win over Costa Zoo. Zoo, the veteran professional, didn't necessarily seem intimidated by the crowd, but discouraged for sure. Right, come on. You can't let him hug you. Push him off. Push him off. And attack the body. Don't let him grab you. He just wants to waste time. He just wants to waste time. That's it. He doesn't let you work. Mr. Yu, you cannot have this guy marching forward, slinging shots at you, and you do all the fucking work. You understand what I mean, don't you? Right, well, do you believe me? I do believe you. Right, go close. Here you see Hadden land a low blow right there, and, and, and it was right there at the point where I don't think he did a lot of really super serious damage, but enough for him to lose the round past the point on him. That particular shot by Urango right on the belt, of course, was on the opposite side of Tony Weeks, who's working as hard as he can, but yeah. can't possibly see everything. No, he couldn't see. Now, I've made a mistake on that. I don't think he was, you know, maybe lost round. He just got a caution from the referee for the block. Adams 28 total connects in that round, his highest number for the fight. And after Urango had doubled him in power shots the round before, Hatton turned around and tripled Urango in that round. So, Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> Look at you, 59, 55. Five rounds to one, Ricky Hatton. You know, Jim, after a great fifth round, Juan Urango just didn't fight the sixth round. I can't understand that. I mean, I thought he had him figured out. He goes back and into a damn thing in round six. But, you know, Ricky Hatton really impresses me. I'm sure he's impressing the judges. He's got a hell of a variety. Left uppercuts, stop, stop, right stop. uppercuts, left hooks, right hooks, straight right hand leads. If you watch the punches, it's amazing how many things he does. Five, one, Hatton. Come on, come on. And you keep expecting him to tire. You keep thinking, well, Nobody can fight 180 seconds of every round like this. But, Emmanuel? He has great stamina, but there's one thing that he does after a lot of his punches sometimes, he does take a little break on his little clinches and tie up and to get his win. Right, right there. Yes, right there. Separate, separate. It's a different way of resting than what most other fighters do. Yeah, and it doesn't, it's not a prolonged clinch where you could say, well, he's holding. He does it just enough to take a little breather. So I guess he deserves a few beers after a night of work like this, huh? <laughs> you know what makes Ricky Haddon so popular, and I'm one of his Biggest best fans, fans, and is my buddy, too, you know. It's not just his exciting style of boxing, but his personality is just so engaging. And to be a successful person and to remain humble is one of the greatest attributes you can have, and he has it. Well, he's, he's kind of a cross between a, a Rottweiler and a Golden Retriever. In the Maybe ring, the, he's a Rottweiler. Maybe the one person in the sport who is least his fan is another British fighter named Junior Witter, who holds a title in this weight class and who is constantly clamoring for a chance to fight Hatton. And Hatton doesn't like Witter any more than Witter likes Hatton, and Ricky keeps saying, I'll never fight him. That's the most money he could ever make, and I'm just not going to give it to him. And he's right. He's right about the money, that's for sure. Whether he'll continue to resist and never fight him remains another question. I can remember when Oscar De La Hoya spent years saying he would never fight Fernando Vargas. And he, he ultimately used that tactic to set Vargas up to fight him in exactly the way he wanted him to yeah, fight him, too. I, I agree with you, Jim. They'll, they'll fight someday. Uh, later in uh, Hatton's career, after he's tried to make as much money as he can in the U.S. Stop, stop. Uh, perhaps with... Or probably with Castillo, or maybe Mayweather way down the road. Irango takes the chance of raising his gloves again, and again the crowd immediately jumps on him for it. What cost, you know what I'm saying? Mosley Colazzo, that's an interesting matchup. Remember, Colazzo's the guy who gave Hatton so much trouble last year in Boston. Vivian Harris trying to come back. And Miguel Cotto, may be the most damaging body puncher in the sport now against the Thai Urkal in Puerto Rico. You might get a bit of the stomach if you get round him anyway. Don't stand in front of this fucker and don't stand off him too much. Pop him. Left upper hand. Right here.